So here we have a fairly innocuous wireless keyboard and mouse that are connected to this computer here, uh, the computer for which is, is actually down here. And they're completely idle right now. So if we take a, a look, it doesn't seem that we're picking up anything significant from it, which is really about what you would expect. You wouldn't expect to expect that. Um, we do seem to get readings that are higher, closer to the mouse. Now what we can do is go ahead and uh, use these instruments here. So if I press something on the keyboard, it's going to communicate with the uh, other side of this, which is probably difficult to see, but there is a, a wireless dongle plugged into one of those USB ports. So I'm going to go ahead and press the space bar a bunch of times. Okay, and we do see that it's, we're getting higher readings closer to the upper right corner of the keyboard, which is an indication that right there is probably where the transmitter is on this thing. And of course we have the mouse here, and if I move that a little bit, we're getting much higher levels much higher readings off the mouse. Five, six milliwatts per square meter. Now keep in mind that, at least the way a lot of people use the computer, you have your hand on the mouse a lot of the time. So you are in very close proximity to this radiation. So your hand um, would be in, you know, there's, there's not even any distance between you and, and where this is coming from. So that would be highly concerning. Now, just to better isolate these, I'm going to put the mouse over here. And actually, I'll go ahead and turn it off. So now this is turned off, and we can just look at the readings from the keyboard. So even though it's not doing anything right now, we still see that there's constant activity up to about one milliwatt per square meter. And let me just turn on the backlight here. And hopefully that's a little bit easier to see. Okay. So Again, we pick up the highest readings about here. Okay, so we're getting about 11 milliwatts per square meter right in the corner here. So the antenna seems to be right about here on this unit. And again, when I'm typing something, it's above one milliwatt per square meter. In fact, you can see spikes every time I press and hold down a key. So if I go ahead and do that again now, you can barely clearly see on that graph there that that was being done. If I do it again, just for a few keys, again, you can see spikes every time I press down a key. Let me do it again now. Again, we see that there's a spike there every time. So, every time you type something, there are pulses of RF radiation going out from this keyboard into your environment. And of course, it's not directional, so it's radiating into all directions. And you as a keyboard user are exposed to this. So let me go ahead now and turn keyboard off. Well, it seems like maybe this can't be turned off. 
What a crappy design. They don't even have a way to turn this thing off. That's, uh... A terrible design, really. Um, we can go ahead and just take the battery out. Because, screw this. But... Now, of course, we're not going to get anything when I press a key, because this keyboard doesn't work, and it's not going to transmit anything. So we're going to go way down. Now with the mouse, I'm going to turn it back on. Okay, so now it's on. And if I'm moving the mouse, I'll turn it around here. Okay, so it does seem the higher levels are on the left side, so the antenna appears to be on this side of the unit. And as we can see, the levels are indeed quite high. So, not as high as you're right here on this part of the keyboard, but you're probably not right here. On the other hand, your hands probably are on top of the mouse for extended periods of time throughout the day. And so, um, you might not think of a wireless mouse as a high exposure compared to perhaps a cell phone or maybe a smart meter or a wireless access point. And intuitively, it would seem that the power would be lower um, because it doesn't need to communicate as far. But the fact is that there is basically zero distance between you and this wireless mouse. So as long as you are using it or even anywhere near it, I mean, let me move the meter away a good foot. Okay. And of course, you can still see spikes when I'm using, using the mouse. And if I'm as close as half a foot away, then we're already at above half a milliwatt per square meter. So these are incredibly high levels uh, of radiation considering how close the exposure is occurring here, um, basically right next to, to your skin. So um, I'm not aware in the literature of um, studies that have focused specifically on wireless mice and any health effects that occur can occur from that. But it is well established in general, uh, the, the large number of health effects from levels that are um, in the range even of a milliwatt per square meter or significantly less. So it's definitely not good for you and you'd want to keep this out of your environment. Now, if you think about it, this is absolutely inexcusable because what we have here is a desktop computer. Why on earth would you need a wireless mouse? It, it just makes no sense. So, let me go ahead and turn this off, and of course, um, I haven't done that right. There we go. Now we see that the levels do decline. If you look at the graph, you can see that they've tapered off a little bit there. Uh, there is a lot of background noise in this environment, so that's why it is, it is like this. You can hear that there's other things in the vicinity, but right here, at least the readings have gone down. A little bit. Um, now, the solution here is pretty simple. You don't need garbage like this. I mean, take your wireless mouse and throw it away. Take your wireless keyboard. And instead, you can get a good, nice wired keyboard like one of these guys here. And it's all wired up. All you've got to do is go ahead, plug it into your computer. It's going to use one USB port. And we've got no shortage of USB ports here. So we can take that, plug it in, and you've got a safe keyboard.